What's up my peoples? Out about today on another scouting day. Hitting the edge of a marsh again and I'm gonna put another camera up. Stay tuned. Another one of these areas that I love to talk about and you'll hear me talk about a lot. Open areas, but thick. The deer, there's a little bit of undergrowth, maybe thigh high, knee high, and then it goes to chest high, then it goes to knee high. But, and all around it, it's just impenetrable stuff. But there's these little channels of where they can travel through here, especially during the rut. Traveling in it, traveling and trying to get on the downwind side of this little bedding area that we just found. Keep that in mind, man. I say it all the time, open areas with, that are thick. Open areas that are thick are, are really gonna be good. It's uh, diversity, a lot of diversity in them kind of areas. There's browsing in areas. You can see there's honeysuckle all over the place here. They love honeysuckle. Pretty nasty stuff here, man. And uh, the problem with these little trees are, you gotta watch, cause I, I can't remember what they're called. I know what they are, but I'm called, uh, the name of them are like Devil's Fire or something like that, but they tear you up. And this is definitely, definitely uh, a good bedding area. I just walked that perimeter up this way, came up this way and walked in and there's a scrape there, scrape right there, and a scrape right there. So there's some really good rubs. There's an, an old rub right there, but there's some really good rubs over in here coming off of the, uh, coming across the, uh, uh, the creek, sorry, the creek. Big. There's a big creek running all the way back towards the south and they're, they're they're bedding up. It's wide enough where you can't get across it, where anything can, unless you can jump like a deer. Um, they're bedding up against that, the bank of it, with probably watching that side of the bank and when specifically, I don't know. It could probably either, or depending on pressure, I think it would probably up, be up here early season along this. Uh, more does than anything, I still think. More of the bigger ones will go in the back along the marsh, but uh, this way they can get up in here early season, um, summertime, also to get away from the bugs on the marsh. Uh, I'm not saying that there's not bugs up here, but it's probably a lot less bugs than right on the marsh in the water. So take that in mind in early season when you're looking around. Do not overthink these things. You start overthinking this stuff and you get like, ugh, what if, what if, what if I hunt here? And then you're you're coming out opening week or mid mid month of opening month and you're like, well, I know this is an early spot. I know these deer are using this as, what if this? What if I screw up this? So what? You're hunting. What if you do screw it up? Well, well, move on. Overthinking, in my opinion, would be what I did for probably over 20 years of uh, deer hunting. I would find a spot like this and it would be super, but I would get into, okay, maybe I'll hunt this way because of this wind and, and I'm uh, let the wind be in my face because we were always pounded on our heads that the wind must be in our face. I, I'm not saying that. I am telling you right now in the last three years I've been hunting like this I am hunting off winds and I'm seeing more bucks than any other time in my hunting career and I'm hunting the winds that benefit them a wind that's coming from me and going to the buck I'm just not getting in that wind stream that's getting my scent to the buck straight into it I'm off of it I'm like if the the scent is coming from me to to the buck and the buck is the camera i'm sitting over here or i'm sitting over here so the buck's never getting my scent it's just missing him 
or it's a cross scent. It's cross like this or vice versa like that. It's not getting to him. Uh, them cross scents, you got to watch because it, you're going to have to pick a side. If it's crossing like that, you're going to have to sit on that side because if you sit on this side, it's going to cross and he starts coming out. It's going to hit him. So keep that in mind too. Hunt the winds that benefit the box, not the hunter. If you hunt the winds benefiting the hunter, that buck is probably not in that bed. He's probably in somewhere, some other bed uh, along that, in that area somewhere else. Keep that in mind. A major intersection here, coming out of here, there's a trail. Coming here, coming down in here and going that way. There's another one coming down here. Use the camera, coming down that way, splitting off there. And bear with me with the camera for a minute. All these trails, you can see one here, you can see one over here. The all them right there. Come between them two trees and heading out that way, which uh, goes up towards up the hill and then back toward the marsh. I put a camera up here. I didn't uh, really see, but I did put a camera up. And uh, I'm gonna show you all these trails come together on this one. So I put the tra camera right here. You can see it. Right. Right there. Just came from that trail right there. Came out here and this is all bedding. I'm gonna check all this out. This is great. Stay tuned. Bed here. Deer hair all over the place. Deer hair all over. Good bed, man. Well, if that's not a bed, I don't know what it is. All batted down. And right there. Look at that. These bucks, they like to be under and out of the sunlight. Remember that. This is definitely buck bedding. And in the middle of this island, there's a giant oak tree. So... That's a really good thing. What I wanted to bring up is well, I wanted to hunt the edge of this marsh. And okay, I'm a bucket. I'm laying in this bed. I'm I am in this bed right now. And I am in the buck bed. I am a, uh, a buck and I'm laying here. The wind is coming in my face. I know nothing's coming from behind me because the big river is behind me. I'm facing the woods. I got a little bit of southwest wind, which might come across me a little bit. A northwest wind will come like this. West wind, northerly wind, northeasterly wind. This whole woods is covered and safe. So I've, I'm the buck and if I smell something, I'm out of here. Say I have an off wind and I want to hunt this tree. I'm a hunter and this buck is laying here. I got the right wind and this tree right here out on the edge of that edge of that, uh, that pine tree right there. So I'm the hunter. This buck's laying here in this bed and I'm the hunter and uh, you know I'm coming through. I'm real quiet trying to stay out of the wind and trying to get my 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 wind not to cross him cross you know try not to contaminate the wind stream going towards me to him so I get to the tree the winds perfect um, I'm hunting this island I know there's a couple beds on this island so I proceed to climb this tree well, this buck is sitting here like this, and he's looking around. He's probably looking around like this. Guys, this is this is what happens with these deer. Probably looking around. He may doze off for a minute. But then he sees movement. He sees movement. Here's my big buck climbing this tree. Hunts over, guys. You screwed up. There's your buck bed. The trail comes right out here. Right out here. There's the tree I want to be in. Already messed the hunt up. 
Here's where he's gonna come into the woods at. So let's see where I can get without him being, what I can get into, get him into a tree and without him seeing me laying there in a the bed. Now there's, there's your trail going in there to that bed. Here's another monster trail going into this. You're busted. We're still gonna see what's going on. So you got two trails coming out of here. You got a great little spot to hunt here, but you gotta figure out and you gotta be key on what tree to get in and on what wind. Here's the tree that we were gonna get in. There's the buck bed. That buck, as soon as you step on this hill, you're busted. See where he's laying, where that little fuzzy, the, uh, the base of that tree, he is gonna pick you off in a second. So we're gonna go behind us and find a tree we can get in. Here's your tree right here. I'm gonna get about right there, either with my stand or my saddle or whatever. And this is all clear. This is a great open spot, but it's thick. Like I always say, it's very thick, but it is open. It's got about shoulder height brush trees with some taller cherries. I think they're cherries. And our buck is right out there. Our buck bed is right out there on that little island out there. He's gonna come out here, hopefully come up this trail, come up right there where that big tree is over there is where it comes up, comes down here comes down the trail wind is going towards him but it's coming it's coming across like this so he's not going to see us but if he comes up this way there's a trail right over here just under this tree where it'll go over his head so if that makes sense you got to come in from the good side the wind side Keep that in mind. But these tacks have had really, really up my game. I've had multiple, multiple um, uh, close encounters with mature bucks. I, I don't film every one of my haunts. It's just, it's, it's a lot. And uh, I got a few here and there, but uh, not all of them. This channel, again, is not gonna have these big giant 180, 200 booners on them. Um, hunting public land. Yeah, you kill 130, 140. Uh, you're doing you're doing something on where I hunt at. So, guys, appreciate you watching. Thanks, and subscribe to the book site.